Hello, everyone. It's December 12, 2016. The time is approximately 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Welcome to today's webinar, Strategic Pitching with the 313 Model, presented by Education and Business Programs here at UC Irvine Division of Continuing Education. Uh, we're very glad you could join us today. Thank you for being here virtually, of course. To begin, full disclosure, this webinar session is being recorded and the archive of this session will be available within 24 hours. If you signed up for this webinar through the UC Irvine DCE free events website, you'll automatically receive an emailed link to this recording once it's posted, which again will be sometime bright and early tomorrow morning. If for some reason you don't receive that emailed link, you can access the archive manually by going to uci.webex.com, clicking on the Event Center tab, and then selecting View Event Recordings. Several webinars will be listed, but simply search for the title of this webinar or the first couple words, which in this case would be Strategic Pitching, and you'll find it on the list provided. But rest assured, the email with the link will go out, uh, and the link will also be posted on the UCI Division of Continuing Education website on the Business Administration and the Innovation and Product Development Program pages uh, in the very near future. My name is Daniel Bowers. I'm the Program Manager in the Education and Business Programs Department. Today, I'm speaking on behalf of my Department Director, Angela Jante. Here's a brief overview of what we will be covering in today's webinar session. First, I'll be giving a brief overview of the features of WebEx, so you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. After that, I'll briefly give you some information about the new Innovation and Product Development Program, and then I'll turn it over to our presenter today, the incomparable Ryan Foland, for the good stuff. And at the end of that presentation, if there's time, we will have a brief Q&A session. And finally, I'll reiterate our contact information if you have any questions that we did not address. So if you encounter any technical difficulties during today's webinar, please first take a sip of coffee as is indicated on the screen and then send a chat message to UCI John uh, and he will help you to troubleshoot any issues you might be facing. If you have a question for Ryan regarding the content of this presentation, please submit that in either the Q&A box or the chat panel, and we'll address your question at the end of the session, time permitting. Uh, the chat panel should show up on the right side of your screen, uh, but you can also submit your question in the Q&A panel as shown on this slide. Some housekeeping to begin with, we're exceedingly happy to announce that we have a new program launching called Innovation and Product Development. This forward thinking program focuses on design thinking and the nurturing of creative cultures within organizations and for entrepreneurs. Designed with the promising creative professional in mind, this course series provides an intensive examination of the scope of demands of real world innovation and product development, whether tangible object or system or service. And if this sounds like it's right up your alley, well, we have some classes that are coming up. The winter classes are open for registration right now, the first of which is Introduction to Creativity and Innovation, which will be held online. Uh, this is the opening course of the program, so if you want to hit the ground running with the increasingly important and marketable skills of innovation and creativity, check out this course. And another course in the program, Managing Development Projects, will also be held online in January, and registration, again, is open right now. This class teaches the practical skills in aligning projects with organizational strategies. It's an invaluable course for those who are looking to manage process and pipelines in product or service development. And registration for that class is open right now. And again, this class will be held online and can be completed from the comfort of your own pajamas. And most importantly, uh, the illustrious Ryan Follin, presenter of this very webinar, will be teaching the strategic pitching and networking class, which I won't talk too much about since I'll let Ryan do that in this presentation but you should certainly consider signing up for this class right away. This online course will begin on January 23rd and registration again is open now. So if you want some more information about this or other programs, you can check out our website at ce.uci.edu. Just click on the certificates tab at the top of the page to search for this program, and you can find a ton of information about policies, registration, and other Division of Continuing Ed info on our site. <clears throat> so as I've said numerous times now, registration is now open for classes in the winter quarter. 
Uh, and the quarter begins on January 3rd, but the courses in this program start about midway through January. So you do have some time, but not that much time. So enroll today if you can. And uh, if your interest has been piqued and you want to learn more, be sure to check out our website for more information or for full program brochures. You can also email me directly and I will happily send you a brochure or answer any program questions you might have. If you'd rather talk to someone on the phone when it comes time to enroll, you can do so by calling our student services office at 949-824-5414. Likewise, if you have any questions about financial aid, class locations, UC Irvine policies, or if you just want to talk, they'll be happy to chat with you. So, at this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to our presenter, Ryan Foland. Ryan is a force of nature and master communicator. He coaches leaders worldwide on the art of simplifying spoken and written messages for greater impact. He's the inventor of the 313 theory, a process whereby pitches begin as three sentences condensed into one sentence. And you know what? I'm not going to say it because uh, I'm going to give away all the good stuff. So I'm going to let Ryan tell you about the 313. But other than that, Ryan writes for Tech Day News and has appeared in Inc., Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, TEDx, and more. An international speaker and entrepreneur, he has a passion for creativity and innovation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Ryan Fole. Yeah, I hear everybody out there applauding, and I appreciate that very much. Super excited to see so many people on this webinar, and I talk about this topic quite a bit. I talk about talking, and when it comes to talking, I like to talk about talking. So today, we are going to cover one of my favorite topics, which is talking, and more specifically about how you can strategically talk to communicate your message, your brand, your business, your product in a way that will spark interest and attention. I've put together sort of a teaser here, but at the same time, we're gonna dig through a lot of these core concepts. And my goal for you here today is to leave this webinar with a new outlook on the way that you can communicate with people. This picture here is fun. It was me recently in Portugal. I was actually flown out there to speak at their 30th anniversary of entrepreneurship, representing the good old USA spoke after the Minister of Economies, and there's me on stage presenting the 313. So we can all pretend like we're back in Portugal, uh, find yourself in the audience, and get ready to rock and roll. If you would like to share this presentation, because sharing is caring, I always incorporate some way to share live. Now, if you're not watching live, and you're watching this a day after, two days after, you can still pretend like it's live, because this webinar will live on. And the more people that see it, the more we can help everyone to become better communicators. You can tweet me at Ryan Foland. Facebook, you can find me, Ryan Foland 313 On Instagram, Ryan.Foland. And on LinkedIn, I'd love for you to reach out and connect. If you want to tag me, I am known and branded as the Ginger MC. Yes, I am ginger and proud. I am loud. And here we are about to get going. Now, speaking of the Ginger MC, uh, if you are interested to get a weekly dose of my insight, as well as insights from other influencers, every Wednesday morning from 8 to 9 a.m., I've got a KUCI radio show. It's called Get Notified. We interview influencers, social media experts, content marketers, growth hackers, and you can find all of the old episodes at getnotified.kuci.org. I love to share what I find through trial and error and all of my mistakes I turn into learning lessons. As Daniel had mentioned, I've been featured in a number of publications. I love working at UCI and I love traveling around helping people become better educators. If you want to see the media I've been featured in, check out ryanfolan.com forward slash media and it's more information for you. I met Eric Rees up in San Francisco at the Lean Startup Conference, and one of the things he said that stuck with me was, as soon as you say the learning is done, you are sunk. So here's the shift, yes, that's learning shift, and as soon as you think that your learning is done, you will find yourself in a cold, frigid water, possibly drowning, and we're here to save you. I'm excited for continuing education to take on this class and this innovation course, because it will help you sail to the destination of your choice. The 313 is a process that you can pitch your ideas so that people buy. But before we get started on that, 
a lot of this course I've structured around branding and who you are. What is your purpose? What is your mission? What do you want to achieve with social media, with your voice out there in the world? Do you want to build community or network? Do you want to raise awareness? Do you want to share information? What is your call to action? And this webinar, I'd like it to be a bit interactive. I see you all there, uh, and I'd love for you to submit some questions and answers, but I want you to pretend like you're here in the room with me. And I want you to get some post-it notes if you have it. I want you to get a piece of paper if you have it. And right now, I challenge you to write down who you are, right? Imagine that I am a big caterpillar and you are, uh, are approaching me in the forest and I say, who are you? If you haven't asked yourself that difficult question lately, hopefully today we will help to get you closer to the answer. What are you trying to do? What is your purpose or mission? It is amazing how many people do not start with that question. More so, what do you hope to achieve when somebody searches for you, your department, your company on Google? If you haven't searched for your own name on Google, that is assignment number one. Open up a new browser, type in your full name, click enter, see what happens. Are you listed? Are your social media uh, popping up? Is there something that is there that you don't want to see? Is there another person with your same name? If you're not asking yourself or searching for yourself, other people are doing it. So communication goes both ways. It's a matter of you knowing what you look like out there so that you can present yourself in the best way possible. Speaking of branding and post-it notes, I believe that your brand should be the intersection of what you think you are and what others think of you. Now let's stop and think about this for a minute. Your brand is not necessarily what you think of yourself or necessarily what other people think of yourself. It is the intersection between the two. In this strategic pitching and networking class, one of the original uh, lessons we're going to work through is this post-it note exercise. Again, here's an interaction for you. Whether you take the class or not, this is worth a couple hundred thousand dollars right here. Here are the steps. Now, I am not a big fan of death by PowerPoint, so I apologize if anyone has somewhat of a stroke looking at this slide, but it's good for you. Just focus on the steps. Step number one, get two colors of post-it notes. I actually brought some here in my pocket, so I'm going to bring them out of my pocket because we're all here together. Now, I've got some that have been written on, and I have some that are fresh, and there are two separate colors. I personally like blue, and then I think that yellow is a nice standardized color for everyone else. Step number two, take your blue post-it notes or red post-it notes, whatever it is, not the yellow ones, okay? And I want you to go through and write down what you think your brand is. Who do you think you are? What do you want people to think about you? It can be a word. It can be a phrase. Seriously, right now, if you don't have a post-it note, you can rip up a piece of paper or you can just use a big piece of paper and draw a little pretend post-it notes on it. If you do not take action today on the webinar, when will you? I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to get you through this. What do you want people to realize or think about you? This is, this is it. Like, I want to be thought of as creative. I want to be thought of as innovative. I want to be thought of as caring. I want to be thought of as whatever it may be. You need to do this first. And I'd suggest to do a brain dump. Now, what's the difference between a brain dump and a brainstorm? A brain dump is a brainstorm when you write things down. So let's create this brain dump. And just for the sake of exercise here, write down at least three or four phrases. Now, Step three, take those other yellow post-it notes. Give them to people who you know, who love you, who might not love you, who work with you, who know you a lot, who know you a little bit, a variety of people that you interact with on a daily basis. The idea is to find out as an informal poll using these post-it notes to get an opinion of what people think about you. I will warn you, some people might think of you in a way that you didn't think they thought of you as, but that is okay. You can use this to your advantage because the more you know about what people think of you, the more control you have when you're communicating what you're all about. You go out there and you hand these physically hand them to people. You can let them know this is all um, something that they don't have to attach their name to. So all they need to do is write down phrases or words that they think about you as a coworker, as a friend, as any interaction that they have with you. And you're going to start to collect these post-it notes. So step four, collect all these post-it notes and put them up onto the wall. 
when I have people that I work with on a private one-to-one basis, this is one of the first things we do. And by far, I've gotten more crazy positive feedback about the awareness they've gotten about themselves from hearing what other people think of them. So imagine now you have actually a glass mirror works best with the post-it notes. I'll even use a sliding mirror sometimes. You can use your sliding glass door. Put all these post-it notes in random order, your blue ones as well as the ones that are yellow. Put them all up on the wall. Then start to look for patterns. Start to cluster the different words and phrases together in a way that they group in different groups. You will notice that some of these groups have your blue post-it notes. You will also notice that some of these groups have none of your post-it notes. You will also see some outliers. And what you want to do is start to focus on the circles that are clusters with post-it notes that have both the yellow ones from your friends, family, or coworkers, and your blue post-it note. Now I'm going to go back because I believe that your brand should be the intersection of what you think of yourself and what others think of you. From a strategic standpoint, it's a lot easier to reinforce somebody what they think versus teaching them something new. If I'm trying to convince the world that I'm creative, it is a lot more difficult than realizing that they already think I'm creative and saying, yep, you're right, because we all like to be right. And if we find out what people know, we can help them reinforce what we want to think. I have so much fun when I communicate with people because I am trying to communicate on a level where there's less being said and more being understood. And this 313 exercise is going to be the secondary project for you after this post-it note exercise. Because the idea here is to keep it simple and make it powerful. One of the most, if not the most challenging thing is to simplify your messaging. I've interfaced with thousands of entrepreneurs and the one thing that is very consistent is their inability and challenge and deathly fear of communicating what they're doing in a short amount of time. If you've interfaced with an entrepreneur and you ask them straight up, so what is it that you do? And you find yourself trying to avoid the five minute monologue as they try to explain their tech. That is what we're trying to avoid. We want to keep it simple and make it powerful. So we can do that with the 313. This concept was developed over years over thousands of interviews and thousands of consultations with all types of entrepreneurs. And it is going to help you understand how to communicate your business, your brand, your idea in three sentences, hence the three, then in one sentence, hence the one, and three words. Imagine your ability to communicate what you do and who you are in three words. If you're not as excited as I am about this, stick around because you will get excited. I want everyone to take a deep breath and not get offended right now because I'm going to offend most of you, okay? The more you talk, the less people listen. That's right. (laughs) And the less you talk, the more people will ask questions. The more you talk, the less people listen. The less you talk, the more people ask questions. And questions is what drives conversation, and conversation is what closes people, is what connects you with people, is what creates curiosity. So we're going to talk about how to talk less so that people ask you more questions. If you do want to follow along, I'm a big whiteboard guy. I'm a big Sharpie on white paper guy. So I've developed this presentation as though you're sitting here next to me. So everybody that's on, I'm super excited because we're virtually connected here one-to-one. If you want to grab a piece of paper, I suggest using a Sharpie because it puts a little pressure on you. If you've noticed, there's no eraser on the Sharpie. (laughs) It's good for you. So if you want to follow along here, do a big three, a one, and a three, and a vertical. And here we go. The problem. You know what? We all have problems, whether they're big problems or little problems. But problems is what drive the economy. Businesses are created to solve problems or to make people happy. And it's very difficult to create a business around making people happy. Most times you are solving people's problems. And if you think of the last time you used your money 
and gave it to somebody, there is a high, high chance it was to solve the problem. So my first part of this first exercise of this 313 is to ask you what problem you're solving. Seriously, what problem is it you're solving? Because I don't care what you do. I only care about the problem you solve. And I really care about that problem if I have that problem. Has anybody here had a paper cut? I want you to think for yourself. Well, you've already probably realized you have or haven't. And most people have. A paper cut is something that stings and it hurts a little bit. But my question to you is, what happens when you have a paper cut? That's the noise, and all of a sudden you'll cringe, and you'll pinch it real fast. You'll probably look over your shoulders and see if anybody saw you wince. You will probably hide the fact that you got a paper cut, and you will slowly walk and find the medical kit that maybe no one has ever used to find a Band-Aid that's the wrong size, and you won't complain about it because you don't want anyone to know you had a paper cut. Well, what if... You had a paper cut that was so severe, it actually chopped off your finger. Now you have a bloody finger on the floor. Yes, blood squirting out of your finger and people start to scream and you run down and everybody goes, ah, what do you do at that moment? What do your coworkers do and what happens? Yes, you call 911. Yes, you get a bag of ice from the freezer. Yes, you locate the tip of your finger and you somehow try to keep it safe as the ambulance comes, as you try to drive frantically to the hospital. Essentially, your world stops. Now, why did I drag you through that macabre scene? It's not because I want to cause you pain, but I sort of want you to realize that action is directly relative to the amount of pain involved. If you get a paper cut, what do you do? Not much because it's not very painful. If you chop your finger off, what do you do? My goodness gracious, great balls of fire with macaroni and cheese on top. You know exactly what to do. You have action associated with it. And when you're describing what you do, forget about what you do. I challenge you to tell somebody who asks you, say, look, it's not what I do that's important. Their eyebrows will raise. And you say, it is the problem that I solve. That's what's important. And then they'll say, well, what problem do you solve? And now you have a chance to explain to them. But the challenge is so many people explain the problem they solve in terms of a scratch, let alone a paper cut, let alone their finger being cut off. So in this first step of the 313 exercise, you have to find out the problem that you're solving. And that problem that you're solving, you have to be able to explain it in one sentence. So think about it. Can you describe the problem that you're solving? Can you describe the problem that your company is solving? without explaining what you do. If you try this, you may find it to be extremely difficult because it is so ingrained into our brains. When I ask people nine out of 10 times, I say, what is the problem you solve? They turn around and they tell me what they do. And I stop them and I say, don't tell me what you do. Tell me the problem that you solve. And only in one sentence. This is the first step of the 313 and it sets the foundation for your ability to communicate with people on a level that gets them involved. Don't describe it as a paper cut. Describe it as something as though it's almost hyperbole to where a finger is metaphorically being cut off and people now understand that there's action to be taken. The second sentence of your three-second 313 pitch is focused on the solution. Many people like to start here and so they feel comfortable and confident with this, but there are still challenges in communicating the solution that you do. For all of you who have had any type of schooling or a mother who likes to correct grammar, I want you to think about the difference between what and how. What is the word what and how is the word how? Oh, not how is the word how. What does the word how mean? Think about it. What is what? Daniel, you want to chirp in? Uh, what, uh, what, what is what? What is the product and how is the process? Ding, 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 ding. What is something? How is how that something works? I've got this fun concept called the iceberg theory. Think of an iceberg with the what on top and the how on the bottom. 
you are in a ship and you are in Alaska and you are frigidly cold but excited because you're approaching this iceberg and it's your iceberg and you're the tour guide on this boat and you want to share this iceberg with everyone on the boat. So somebody says, well, what's up with this iceberg? Imagine a situation where you grab them by their shirt, jump into the water on the way down, ask them to hold their breath and then drag them underwater and tell them how this whole thing works before even telling them what you do. That is exactly what happens. When people ask you a what question, you should give them a what answer. Oftentimes when people ask a what question, people will answer with a how answer. So what is it you do? <gasps> well, I do this and 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 it gets messy. So for every what, there is a number of different hows. If you have a smartphone application, what your application is is very straightforward what it does. How it works is a little bit more intense though. The problem with explaining how you do something before explaining what you do is that you disrespect your listener. Yes, you disrespect your listener. As soon as you tell somebody something that they already know, they get disengaged. And if you explain what you do in a very simple sentence, as in one sentence, if the person is interested at all in what you do, take a big guess at what you think the question will be next. It is going to be, well, how does that work, Ryan? <laughs> now, before I answer that how, I would ask them, well, that's a great question. But before I take you under the frigid water and show you how my product or service works, I first want to ask you a question. Is that okay? Your listener is going to say yes. How much do you know about smartphone applications? <laughs> Funny you ask. I'm a computer science engineer and I've developed four of them myself. Fantastic. So I don't have to get lost in the minutia of C++ and the different platforms. I'm going to shortcut to the relevant information about how I do something that supports the what it is that I do. Again, let's think about this. If somebody asks you what you do, do not tell them how you do what you do. If somebody asks you what you do, explain what you do. And my challenge for you is can you do that in one sentence? So if you're looking here, the three sentences that you're going to be pitching, the number one is the problem, your problem in one sentence. Number two is the solution. It is going to be your solution in one sentence in the form of what it is that you do. The third sentence for your three-sentence pitch is your market. It is amazing to me how many people forget the importance of the market when communicating their idea. Because guess what? Your solution that solves a problem is for a certain type of people. Do not, if you learn anything from this entire webinar, I want you all, everyone is here listening, this is the one main, main takeaway. Don't ever use the E word or the A word when describing your market. The E word is everyone, and the A word is anyone. It is unbelievable how many times I will tell people that and then I will ask them what their market is and they look at me stone cold and they go, well, it's for everybody who or anyone who, and I go, stop, <laughs> your market is not everyone. What is the difference between a target market and a market potential? Mr. Daniel here, I'm sure everybody wants to trip in, but we're not gonna let them because there'd be too many people. In your opinion, what is the difference between a target market and a market potential? Market potential is everyone and anyone. <laughs> yes, yes. Target market is not. Good. Yes. Way, way to. Now, I will let you do that because you are not describing your market, but you're describing a market potential. The market potential is the entire world, it's everyone. It's the largest amount of people that could potentially use your product. Your target market is the small little center on a bullseye of a bow and arrow target that you are one foot away from <laughs> so that you can hit the bullseye specifically. Your product is not for everyone. And as soon as you start to communicate that, the real magic happens because people will start to want to know if your product is for them. Think about that for a minute. Now, I didn't tell Daniel I was going to do this, but I have a post-it note right here. 
and you can hear the audio. So you can't see me, but you can hear how they hear the audio. I'm folding this paper in half. Now I'm folding it in half again. I have nothing up my sleeves. This paper is a post note folded in force, and I'm going to flip it up, and it landed on the table. Now I'm going to open this post note back up, and I don't know if you can read what's on here, Daniel, but it says the cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are here at UCI in this major research facility, and within the last 10 seconds, I have just created the cure for cancer. Isn't that great? Everybody's so excited. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a happy ginger right now. But you know what stinks about that situation? Is that my cure for cancer that I just created is absolutely useless unless I can find the people that have that type of cancer. And I meet so many entrepreneurs so many innovators, so many people who think that they have created their cure for cancer, something that is so amazing because they are so excited it is solving a big problem. But that problem is still going to be a problem unless you can find the people who have that problem. And one of the biggest mess ups when I see pitching is that people will try to communicate that their market is so massive it's going to be billions of people, and that is so cool. And guess what? They're only going to need to capture one-tenth of one percent of that to be super, super, super successful. As soon as you communicate to an investor or anyone who's had legitimate experience with launching products, if you tell them that your entire market is the entire world, they will stop, they will stop listening at that moment. Because if you're an entrepreneur or even if you're a mid-sized company, if you are not aware of who your market is, then no matter of money in the world is going to help you get in front of that because it is so cost prohibitive to get in front of every single person. But it is smart if you can communicate exactly what your target market is and doing so into one sentence. So let's think about this for a moment. Let's go back. You now have the potential as of right now, 32 minutes into your life that you've invested and you should be able to communicate your business in three sentences. The problem that you solve in one sentence. Your solution in one sentence. And the people who you cater to in one sentence. Believe it or not, you can now pitch your business in three sentences. Everything that somebody needs to know to start getting curious about your business are within the problem, the solution, and the market. People have been talking about this for years, but what's unique about this way of approaching it is that if you limit yourself to one sentence for each of these, you now can spark interest, which sparks conversation. By saying less, people will want to hear more. If you agree that there is value in saying your whole business in three sentences, then I'm assuming you're going to want to know how to get the entire thing down into one sentence. And this is a very exciting thing because it's based in mathematics. Mathematics are amazing because we can predict outcomes based on rules and laws. So I have ABC here. We want to keep this simple. If any of you out there who are on or if you're joining us in a recording, I want you to ask yourself, how many different combinations of A, B, and C can you make? A, B, C, A, C, B, A, no, not C, B, A. I want you to think about it. Do the math real quick. And take a guess. Three, two, one. I bet you a few people guessed nine, but you're wrong. It's actually six. And it's six because it's three factorial. That's right. It is three factorial, which means it is three times two times one. So what if, what if I told you, using mathematics now again, what if A, B, and C equaled P, S, and M? Look at what we're doing here. We have already talked about how A, B, and C, you can combine those different letters six different ways. Now, using the transitive property, I believe, if A equals P and B equals S and C equals M, then this whole thing is true. A, B, C can equal six different variations in the same respect you can have six variations of the problem, the solution, and the market. Now think about this for a moment. You can combine your problem, solution, and market 
into one sentence six different ways. Now that is crazy. A lot of this class, we're going to talk about networking. And if you've ever been in a networking situation and there's a group of people that you're meeting and you're introducing yourself and then somebody new comes into the group and everybody else repeats the exact same thing that they said when you first met them, it doesn't sound exciting. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, this person can only explain what they do in one way. You can be in a group, in a networking environment. Six new people could come to a group and you could explain what you do in six different ways. How does this work? It is, I am solving this problem by doing this for these people. It could also be, I am solving this problem for these people, or these people have this problem, here's how I'm solving it. Six different combinations of that. You cannot do this unless you really invest the time into figuring out what your problem is in one sentence figuring out what your solution is in one sentence, and figuring out your market in one sentence. What do I do? I solve one of the biggest, bloodiest problems known to entrepreneurs, and it's their inability to communicate their idea in a short amount of time. My solution is a pitching method that enables people to speak about their business in as few as three words. My market are early stage entrepreneurs who are pre-funding that are in California, specifically Southern California, and those who are looking to raise money soon or get traction with early products. So basically, I solve the problem of people being able to explain what they do by creating a solution-based pitching uh, equation for entrepreneurs who are trying to get traction specifically in Southern California. Now, is there value in variety when you're speaking with people? Yes. Is there value in having more than just your rehearsed elevator pitch? Yes. I am on a mission to eliminate the elevator pitch. Everyone, together, join with me. Eliminate the elevator pitch. If you've ever heard an elevator pitch, or if you've practiced, or you have your elevator pitch, I want you to think to yourself, does it sound genuine and authentic and conversational? No, it doesn't. Because people disconnect with you when you're not being genuine. And if somebody says, Ryan, what do you do? And I just go, well, my name is Ryan Foland. And what I do is help entrepreneurs communicate in a more effective way. Because what I have found is that they cannot communicate in the time. There's a disconnect. <laughs> I think it's funny when like I'll meet somebody and I know at least what their company is and then I'll ask them, you know, what's going on with their company and they will literally in their elevator pitch state what their company name is and what they do as though I am just, I have no idea at all. And it's disrespectful because they're not letting me talk. They're not letting me engage, not letting me listen. I'll have people that'll come up and they know that I'm into pitching and they'll pitch me and they'll say, how did I do? And I'll say, you did terrible. <laughs> it's because you pitched. You didn't spark a conversation. You need to hold the information and what you have um, in your back pocket and just give it out briefly. If you can tell people the problem you're solving and not what you do, they start to get excited about if that problem is right for them. I talk, and I'm going to dig a lot in the class into what I call a permission-based pitching. Nobody wants to be told anything because we've all had parents. Think for yourself if you like movies. Percentages are. We have tons of people on the webinar right now. I want you to think to yourself, do you watch movies? I'm going to guess most of you say yes. Do you prefer to watch the unedited 10,000 hours of footage before it's combined in intense format into a storyline that is an hour and a half to two hours? No. There's a reason why you don't have access to that 10,000 hours of footage. It's because it would be boring. You would just be totally disengaged and not finish. People like puzzles. People like to connect the dots. Our brains are very investigative. Whether you know it or not, when you're walking around, millions of mental maps are going on in your brain to make sure you are walking correctly, you're connecting 
trees and dots and people's faces, things that you don't even know. And if you can deliver your pitch in a way that gets people to have to figure some of it out, they are going to get way more engaged. So to recap, you have an ability now within this 313 to explain your company, your business in three sentences. You can take those core elements and you can explain what you do in one sentence. Now, what's exciting and magical is that you can now take it one step further and you can explain your business in three words. What do I do? Think about what I do. I'm, think of me as the craftsman of communication. Right there, in the last minute and a half, your brain's mental maps just started to think about, well, what is a craftsman? Well, craftsman, in your mind, you might be thinking of somebody who uh, is very particular about the final product, is somebody who takes pride in their work. Maybe he was an apprentice for a long time. Maybe you're thinking of Arthur and how he was uh, an apprentice for Merlin, and then he became a powerful, sword-wielding, powerful, mythical creature. Whatever, Wherever it goes in your brain, we have words that are associated with mental maps. Communication is something that for you, it could mean a number of different things. But when I link together the craftsman of communication, in your brain, you're about three steps into a five-step aha moment. Maybe you could think of me as the blacksmith of branding. Think about that. You know what a blacksmith does. You're imagining him cracking down a big hammer on a big, uh, what is it, um, an anvil, sparks flying. Well, that's what I do with people's brands. So the trick to explaining your business or what you do in three words. I'm actually kind of being tricky here because it's not three words, it's two words. It is your business in two words with a connected relational term in between. That's right. It's really your business in two words. There's thing one, a relational term, and thing two. If I were to say golden arches, what do you think of right now? Probably where you eat at a place called McDonald's. And in your brain, you're thinking of, I like the fries. I don't like the fries. I like the burger. I wish they put more extra pickles on my, uh, on my cheeseburger. The Big Mac looks good, but as soon as I realized what a calorie was, it wasn't so appealing anymore. In your brain, marketers pay millions of dollars to get inside those mental maps. If I were to say swoosh, you might think of the Nike swoosh. You might think of athletes. You might think of shoes. You might think of you needing to put on your shoes and go outside. Your mind has its own map with millions of neural connections for just about every word. So this three words is not a tagline. It is not a tagline. It is not a tagline. A tagline is something that is a tagline. This is your business in three words by using relational terms. Are you the McDonald's of blank? Are you the where Uber meets something else? Are you a blender of emotions? Think of how you can describe a relationship between two things that don't even have to do with your business at all. The idea is that you're getting people to start to think about what it is that you do without you telling them. How does this all work together? The 313 enables you to explain yourself in three sentences, to explain what you do in one sentence, and ultimately explain your business in three words. This class is going to be about strategic, it's strategic pitching, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is the what. There are so many elements of how underneath, and it, this cornerstone is this 313 concept because once you get this core messaging down, everything builds out from there. You develop the three sentences, the one sentence, and the three words, and how you communicate it is you go backwards. Imagine that same networking situation. You meet people and they have their little elevator pitch all the time, and you meet someone and they say, well, what do you do? And you say, well, the trick here is to try to make them seem, make it seem like you came up with this on the spot, and you should have a number of different ways to describe yourself in three words. You say, well, think of what I do as, well... I'm like, a, I'm like a seamstress for words. And they might kind of look at you squinty and think for a second, but in their brain, in that moment, they're thinking of a seamstress sewing things together and then of words. So wait a minute, this guy's actually sewing words together? They're going to then say, what do you do? And I would say, well, it's not what I do. It's the problem that I solve. And they say, well, what is the problem that you solve? Problem is 
that people lose millions of dollars because they can't explain what they do in a way that resonates with the audience. Hmm, I'm interested. Well, how does that work? And now I can explain how it works. You see how there's a fluidity to this. In public speaking, and in this class, we're going to cover a lot of speaking techniques and strategies that will blow your mind and help you communicate in a way that gets you excited about being a public speaker. It's that you want people to not know everything in the very beginning. You want them to ask questions. You want them to engage. You want them to know a little bit at a time. Think about if you're going to the bar to pick up on somebody. Do you just walk up and stand up on a bar on a stool and just tell everybody your life story? No, that doesn't work. But as soon as you meet someone and then you have a slight conversation and you say, hey, you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I got I to gotta go. Um, and you leave. <laughs> they turn around and they're like, wow, that guy seemed interesting or that girl seemed interesting. And they might actually follow after you. It is the power of the takeaway. And the 313 is focused on permission-based pitching. And it's a binary track. If I can explain the one problem that I solve and the person that I'm talking with, if they can tell me that that's a problem that they have, I can ask them, well, are you interested in solving that problem? They say yes. And then you have now an opt-in where they want to know what your solution is. In essence, this 313 helps you to put your idea into people's head. And if they can connect the dots on their own, which they will, and you work through the process and deliver the information in a way that lets them get it, if you can get somebody you're talking to to understand what it is that you do without you telling them, that is the master ninja communication skill. That is communication telepathy. And we're going to dive into this 313 in the class. It's going to be the cornerstone for your strategic pitching and for your networking. With the 313, I can help you craft a 30-second pitch. With the 313, we can expand it to a minute. It can be a two-minute. It can be a six-minute. It can be a 10-minute. It can be a 45-minute. But it all is focused on these core elements of pitching. A great pitch is not about procedure. It is about getting and keeping attention. A great pitch is all about keeping attention. And if you just tell everybody just how you're doing things and you overload them with information, they will become disinterested. Now, in this class, we talk about pitching, we talk about networking, and I help you to understand how to leverage social media for what it is that you're doing out there in the world. So I put together a couple slides as a nice taste of some of the cool information you're going to receive as part of the strategic pitching and networking course. We are going to dive deep into determining what platforms are right for you right now. Are you looking to get more customers in the door? Do you want to create awareness? Are you trying to recruit talent? Fill in the blank. I want to connect with blank. I want to engage with blank. We are going to force you to explore these questions, and I'm going to have you understand which platform is right based on what you're doing and help you through how to even engage on those platforms. I have a strategy called <laughs> time, Social Media Management for Managers Managing Social Media. It's a long acronym, but if you are not on the social media bandwagon, this course is going to launch you into something that gets you comfortable with it because you are your brand online and offline. You are your brand, and if you understand your brand and can communicate your brand, you will be so much more effective in communicating what you want. Your business means nothing if no one knows who you are. And these days, as an entrepreneur, I see people that invest time, effort, money into their social media platforms for their business, and then the business has a change of a name, or the business goes under, and now all that energy is into the internet ether. If you figure out what you're an expert on, and I can help you hone in on that expertise. I can't give you the expertise. I can help you communicate your expertise. And once you do that, we can help you to amplify that on social media channels. So what I've done here is I've put together what I believe is the top, top things you need to do to understand which social media platforms are good for you. First off, identify your goals. Do you just want to be present? Do you want to have engagement? Or do you want to have all of the above and a following? 
Identify your audience. Who, what, when, where, why. This is uh, your target, target market. Then we can look at choosing the platforms. And from a content standpoint, you have to appeal to your audience. If your target audience likes blank, then share and create blank related content. Content is king. I've got all kinds of fun hacks for you that we're going to explore. But real quickly here in the last five minutes, I want to go through and just give you a taste of a way to look at social media from your target market standpoint. Here's a representation of age demographics in 2016 uh, distribution of Facebook users. Very interesting information if you know who you're going after. I've also created specific breakdowns and charts for each of these platforms to understand how you can get presence, engagement, or presence, engagement, and following from a basic standpoint. If you just want to have a presence, I can tell you what to do. If you want to have a presence and engagement, I can help give you a guideline. If you want to increase that to get a following, I can help you with that too. One of the biggest problems I find with people on social media is they don't know how much time it takes. So I've gone through and I'm going to help you understand how much each one of those will take based on your level. Are you a beginner, intermediate, or pro? The more you know about how to effectively and strategically use social media, it ties into your strategic pitching. It ties into your network. It is crucial for you to understand that. And that's what I'm so excited to bring in this offline and online communication together. Let's look at a couple more. Who is on Twitter? Here's a breakdown of Twitter users as of February 2016 by age in millions. Using the back-end demographics of who's on these platforms, if you've identified who your target market is, can help you determine whether this is the right platform for you or not. Again, what level do you want to have and how much time will that take? I've got this all broken down for Instagram. Using stories. If you're not using stories and following what's happening, you're probably falling behind. Now, what's exciting about this is that we're going to make it into a strategic use of social media. It's not just get on all platforms. It's what are the right platforms for you, and then how much time is it that you would want to invest? LinkedIn is a powerful, powerful networking tool. I am going to share with you my LinkedIn hacks, how it works for me, how I use it in following up at networking meetings, creating new business, all kinds of exciting things like that. So I'm just going to jam through these because if you want to get a deep dive, that's what you can do. Um, Snapchat is a whole other beast that we will cover. You might or might not know about it. If you don't, you should. It's for a younger audience. It might not be the right platform for you, but you got to know about it. Let's see here. Okay, I don't know if we have a chance or a time to take questions. We have a lot of people, so I'm not sure if we have enough time for it. Probably not. Daniel's giving me the no. So it's your fault for everybody showing up, but that's okay. If you enjoyed this, you're going to love the class. If you enjoyed this, I would love for you to share it with people because all the time people try to get my time for this 313 concept. And I gave you a really good high level breakdown was, that was also deep into the woods. So you're going to have to take your questions and tweet me. Fine, fine, fine. Tweet me if you want. That's at Ryan Folan. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll get back to you on the public platform. And, uh, you know, I don't think we have time for the bonus tips and tricks. Here's me, the Ginger MC. I run the OC Tech Happy Hour, the largest and fastest growing social, uh, social gathering here in Orange County, and a meetup of over 4,000 people that we've built within the last 12 months. Um, yes, but I've got tons of things that I can teach you, and I love to teach you because most of what I teach are things that I have learned in the past. So I'm going to hand this back to Daniel. And if you want the bonus tips and tricks, come take the class because it's five weeks of an accelerated learning for strategic pitching and networking. And I am super honored to do this for UCI and continuing education. It's amazing the programs that they have going on here. I'm super excited about this new innovation certificate. Daniel, back to you, sir. Thanks so much, Ryan. And uh, again, if anyone has any questions that uh, obviously we didn't have a chance to get to, you can send those my way. Uh, my email is on the screen right now. In fact, let me jump ahead and uh, there's my contact information as well as that is of my program director, Angela Jonte. And our website, if you want to check out more about our classes or programs, is ce.uci.com. 
dot edu. Uh, but thank you again to Ryan and thank you for everyone logging in and those watching this recording. I hope you learned a lot. And uh, if you're interested, please contact us for more information. But uh, wishing everybody a happy and healthy holiday season. And thanks for joining us. Take care.